right, welcome everybody. May this be the greatest night that you ever had in 2001. It better be the last one. So I trust this is going to be your best evening you had in the year 2001. So every old, old year's evening, I trust God to give me a message for the next year. And normally it is so. I don't think I've ever missed it, so I believe tonight God's going to give us a word. What is God's plan? What is God's purpose? What has God got in mind for you for the year 2002? So I, I, I really believe I've got a word for you for the year 2002. And if you, if you take this word tonight, you'll understand everything about your life. Right, get your Bibles. If you Bibles, can I say it we net sien of moet ek bybel lees of moet ek net gesel. Hier is genoeg bybel, so let's go to Colossians chapter 1. You're watching by television, this is going to be a message for the new year and I trust this is the word that God has given me. What is God's plan and purpose for this year 2002 for everybody listening to my voice? Verse 26, the mystery of which was hidden for ages and generations from angels and men. There's a mystery that's been hidden from angels and men. You've heard the scripture, but tonight you're going to see the scripture. But it is now revealed. In other words, it's been opened up. It's been made known to his holy people, the saints. To him God was pleased. Say, God is pleased to show me something. Okay? To make known how great for the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery. There's a mystery, right? A mystery. But this mystery has got a glory. So I want to know what is the glory of the mystery. It's one thing to know the mystery, but this mystery has got something that goes with it, and that is glory. So tonight, we've all known the mystery is Christ in us that's been hidden throughout the ages now revealed but there's a glory of the mystery right so I want you to know what is the riches and it's not just the glory this glory is rich the riches of the glory of this mystery which is Christ within and among you the hope of glory now now this is something the mystery is Christ is now in us The mystery has a glory. The mystery is Christ in us. That is so rich that it has a glory. No. The mystery is Christ in us. That equals the hope of glory. But the mystery that Christ in us is already glory. This so much glory in the fact that Christ in a, is in us. But if we can realize that the mystery, the glory of the mystery that Christ is in us, is only an hope of the real glory. So that glory, the Bible calls it a down payment. The Bible calls it the first fruits of the Spirit. The Bible calls it an undercoat. So that is what it is. That's why the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18, as we behold in a mirror the face of Jesus Christ, we are changed from glory to glory to glory. So the fact that Christ is in us when I'm born again, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my Savior. He comes to indwell me. There's a glory about this mystery. But if I can really fathom what God really meant when He said Christ is now in me, and I can work on this glory, it will take me from glory to glory because that glory is only a hope. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I will come to the real glory. And the real glory is Galatians 4, verse 19, where Paul declares, he says, My beloved brethren, for whom I am in travail again, till Christ be formed in you. So this last glory, this last glory equals Christ. 
is now formed in me. And then I can say with Paul in Galatians 2.20, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that is alive in me. And this, this glory is what creation is waiting for. It's not waiting for a rapture of the church. It's not waiting for a doomsday. It's not waiting for destruction. It's not waiting for a taking over of an antichrist. It's not waiting for a false prophet to be revealed. Creation, the creation that God created is waiting for this glory which Romans 8 tells us the manifestation of the sons of God and that is when Christ is formed in us. So I tell you the next plan on God's agenda is not the end of the world. The next plan on God's agenda is for you to come to a place where Christ is formed in you. And this is going to be the word for 2002. You can write it in your Bible and people are going to break through in it in measures that we've never seen and that we've never heard of before. Now, I believe Michael, Michael Pitt said, we've got the video here on uh, principles of agreement. He said, when Adam fell for sin in the garden, the thing that made him to fall was God made Adam in his likeness and in his image. Then Satan came and said, if you eat of this tree, you will be like God. Hello, he was already like God. You see? But then Satan drew him and said, if you can take something from the outside of you, and try to get that on the inside of you, you will be like God. But he was already like God. So right now, at this moment of time, people are grabbing again for things outside. They're looking to the Middle East. They're looking to America. They're looking to the war in Afghanistan. They're looking to things outside to try and pull truth into the church instead of tapping onto the inside of you where Jesus Christ declares in, in Luke chapter 17, the kingdom of God is within you. And Christ in me is a mystery. That mystery has a glory. If I work on this glory, it'll take me from glory to glory till I will come to a place where Christ will now be formed in me and where people look at me, they will not see me. They will see Christ. And that is what the creation is waiting for. Right, go to Romans chapter 8. Hallelujah. This is a prophetic word. It's not a message. A prophetic word for the year 2002. Look at verse 18. But what of that? What of what? <laughs> for I consider that the sufferings of this present time... Now look at me and don't look too holy. Is there anybody in this house that had some sufferings lately? Okay, did he on a lift? Mark, is there, is there somebody that went through some difficulties in this last year or this last two years I mean financially in your body in your marriage in your business is there anybody that had some sufferings and hardships okay most of you so I can preach to you so he says what of the sufferings so now I'm going to tell you what of it okay so what of that I consider that the sufferings of this present times are not worth being compared with the glory that is about to be revealed listen carefully to us I'm reading the Amplified and in us and for us and to be conferred on us we've already got the mystery that has the glory and that is Christ in you is Christ in anybody in this house so you've already got a part of the glory. That glory is of the mystery, but it's only the hope of the true glory. And that true glory, Romans 8 says, is to be revealed. It's not yet revealed. Don't miss it. This glory, that glory is revealed, Christ is in us. But this glory is not yet revealed, for that glory is only a hope. And for 2,000 years, people have this hope in them. 
they're walking around with a hope and they, they're trying to, 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 to get it satisfied with so many other things instead of getting the revelation of a glory that is to be revealed. Now the Amplified Bible says, to us, in us, for us, and to be conferred on us. Now if you take 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17, it says more or less the same thing. It says the sufferings of this present time cannot be compared to the eternal weight of glory. There's a weight of glory that's coming to us. If we don't look at the things that are happening to us, but if we look at the unseen things, and the unseen things is the glory that is yet to be revealed. Right? Now in 1996, I had a dream. Oh dear Eve, this is the dream. I was standing in front of these two gates. Massive gates. I mean, these gates are big booty. But they bolted up. And there's a fence around this gate. On this side is the creation. God's creation. On this side is people. Masses and masses and masses of people. People, people, people. And they're pushing against this gate. And in the dream God said, any revelation can be preached out. And once it's preached out, it can be caught anywhere in the world. So if I preach a revelation tonight, tomorrow morning somebody can get that revelation in America because it's been preached into the heavenly realm. But God said there's a revelation that will never be preached out. It's got to be lived out and whole creation is waiting for that revelation. Now look at the next verse. Verse 19. For even the whole creation, all nature waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known. They wait for the revealing, the disclosing of their sonship. Look this way. The whole creation waits for something to come to the front. And that is the sons of the Most High God. Now, the Son of God, when Jesus Christ was baptized, the heavens opened and God declared, This is my Son. And he walked into the desert to be tempted, and this is how the devil tempted him. He didn't tempt him with bread. He didn't tempt him to jump off the temple. He tempted him this way. He said, if you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. If you are the Son of God, jump from this mountain. If you are the Son, he tempted him in his sonship. Then Jesus came back out of the desert, walked to the synagogue. On his way to the synagogue, demon-possessed people met him. They fell to the ground, and this is what they shouted. We know who you are. You are the Christ the son of the living God. Then, years later, Jesus stood in front of the disciples and said, Who do men say that I am? They say, they say you are Elijah, some say John the Baptist, but who do you say that I am? Peter stood up and said, You are the Christ, the son of the living God. So the son equals the Christ. So the whole creation waits for the sons of God to be revealed. What does that mean? They wait for Christ's irons. The Bible says they were called Christians in Antioch, Paul and Barnabas, because that's the only two people that came forth and said, Hey, look, there's Christ. I said, No, no, it's Paul. <laughs> that's Paul. You know, the word is only twice in the New Testament. Christians, only twice in the New Testament. And that's what when Paul came in to Antioch, they said, yes, Christ, I thought they killed him. They said, no, this is Paul. Wow. See, but he's doing the same thing, speaking the same word, performing the same miracles. So the whole world, the whole creation is waiting for people to be like Christ. 
That's what Paul says. I pray that Christ will be formed in you. This is the glory that we've only got a hope for and we've got this glory but if we work on this glory we will go from glory to glory so we reach that glory and it's only to be revealed and the whole creation is waiting and in the dream I was there in the front it could have been you but in the dream it was me and people were pushing and this bolt started bulging and I realized this thing's going to break any minute and God said, keep on pushing, son. If you can go from glory to glory and get through that gate, whole creation is waiting for the Christ people, the sons of God to be made manifest. And if you can break through, imagine all the people that's pressing from behind. And the minute you break through, multitudes will break through. And God said, son, this is 2002. People are going to break through into sonship. Hey, 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 hey. And what will happen if you come forth in the life of Christ? What will happen if you start walking like Christ, speaking like Christ, doing like Christ, being Christ to the earth? I mean, the whole creation is waiting for it. Listen to this Eastern saying. There's a place that seems impossible to reach. But if you will go just one step further to reach it, and when you've reached it and come back to others, then you become the speaker. So if you can get to this glory, everybody will listen to you. If one man breaks through in the supernatural, all of a sudden the whole world runs off to you. But till today, after a few years, everyone that stood up, or most of them became flaky. But what about if we get through to this revelation? Go to verse 29. For those whom he foreknew, of whom he was aware and loved beforehand, he also destined from the beginning, foreordaining them to be molded into the image of his Son and share inwardly his likeness, that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, putting right with himself, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity and condition or state of being. There's a mystery. But this mystery has been revealed when Paul came on the scene. The mystery has a glory. The glory is Christ is in us. And for 2,000 years Christ is in people. But that mystery and glory is only the hope of the real glory that is to be revealed. That glory that is to be revealed is when the sons of God will break through and be manifested on the earth. And that is Christ formed in you I trusted God for the word and God said son it's time for the sons of God to come forth I've been waiting now for 2002 years and I would love somebody to start preaching it so that somebody will start reaching it so that somebody will come back and speak it We've seen a glimpse in Nigeria with Brother T.B. Joshua. Why do people run there? Because they see something. But what about if a whole house like this sits and can realize tonight they're listening to a prophetic word and not just to another message, but to a word from a man that really spent time to hear from God, not just to preach another message, not just to, to soothe, say something that will stir your heart and stir your emotions, but a word from the living God that says, Thus saith the Lord at the last day of 2001, sons and daughters of the Most High God, this is what you can reach in the year 2002, and you're going to see people breaking through. Now let's go on. Verse 31. Now this is going to be a revelation for most of you. What then shall we say to all this? If God is for us, 
who can be against us? Kom, jij moet het nou niet missen. Voor jaren gebruik ons dit als een positief beleid. Oh, het God voor ons is, wie kan tegen ons wees? Oh, if God be for us, who can be against us? Oh, if God be for us, who can be against us? But we never read the context. What shall we say of what I've just preached? The previous verses is discussing the manifestation of the sons of God. The previous scriptures are discussing the glory that is to be revealed in the days that you and I are living in. Now the Bible comes and says, what shall we now say about these things? God is saying, hey, listen, son. Hey, listen, daughter. You're going to come forth as the Christ person. So what shall we say about these things? Come on, Lee. What shall we say about these things? God is saying, I want you to come forth. I want you, 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 you and you. I want you to come forth and people must not know the difference between Christ and you. Because that is what creation is waiting for. Now, Paul says, what shall we now say about that? What shall we then say? If God is for us to bring this about, who can be against us? Who can be against you to break through? Only yourself. If you read through this whole scripture, it's only you that can stand in the way. Let's go on. It says, he, he who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely, graciously give us all other things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect when it is God who justifies us? Who puts us in right relation to himself? Who shall come forward and accuse or impeach those whom God has chosen. Will God, who acquits us? Who is there to condemn us? Will Christ Jesus, who died, or rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, actually pleading as he intercedes for us? Who shall separate us from Christ's love? Suffering, affliction, tribulation, calamity, distress, persecution, hunger, destitution, peril or sword, even as it is written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. You are put to death so that Christ will be formed in you. What shall you say about these things that God wants you to come forth as a son of God? Who can bring any charge against you if you are reaching for that? Who will condemn you if you're reaching for that? Who will stand against you if you're reaching for that? But while you're reaching for that, uh, things will come against you. But that is just to kill you. So that at the end of the day, Christ will come to you. <laughs> Hallelujah! Hallelujah! But now... If you murmur and grumble and complain, you're not weighing the glory that is to be revealed. You're looking at 2 Corinthians 4, 7. He says, we do not look at the sufferings, but we look at the unseen, the glory. But we look at, if we look at the present sufferings, we will not get the weight of glory. So you can decide tonight, do you want to die tonight? In the sense that I'm preaching. Or are you going to stay alive? How do you stay alive? By forever complaining. Murmuring. Moaning. Talking about what's happening. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Hmm. Just this day. About what did you complain today? Or did you count it all joy? In whatever you went through. Do you count it joy? Remember, this is where you're heading. That's where you're heading to. So, what are you going to do about it? You must come forth as a Christ person. Christ is the anointed one. That's what Christ means. The Hebrew translation says, Mashiach means to rub it on or in. Christos means 
to rub on oil. Christ is the anointed one. And that comes oil or hands. What do I mean tonight? If you can grasp that, I want to lay hands on every person and anoint every person with oil in the name of the Lord. The whole world will listen to you if you break through in sonship. But they still do not listen to us because there's still too much of us. We are, we are yet too much alive. And tonight I'm going to pray for God to kill you. Will you accept that as a prophetic word for a new year? We're going to take four rows at a time. Let's start the first four rows. One, two, three, four rows. Come to the front. Come on quickly. Before 12 o'clock, I want to anoint everyone with oil in the name of the Lord. But remember what I'm anointing you for tonight. You come forth as a Christ person. Right.